This U.S. Department of Education official was a keynote speaker at the 1989 National Governors Conference on Education and told the Conference of Governors, what we're into is total transformation of society. We no longer see the teaching of facts and information as the primary purpose of education. You know, America's kindergartners score very high on tests, reading, math, and science, in the 90 percentile range. But by fourth grade, in that international comparison, comparison tests were down into the 70 range. By eighth grade, we're into the 50 percentile range. And by the time they graduate high school, our kids are in the 20 percentile range worldwide. The longer they stay in public schools, the less educated they become. Attending a public school and getting an education are not at all the same thing, my friends. Not at all. You know, some of America's great industrial and, and thinkers and creative leaders, such as Warren Buffett, Bill Gates of Microsoft, Steve Jobs of Apple, and on and on it goes, never attended a college or didn't attend for more than a couple of semesters. See, you're not being taught how to think and how to create in our schools. You're being taught to be a part of this big mass of dumbed down people that will just follow like sheep into that one world global society. 80% of parents rate public schools a D. Almost the same percentage of parents rate their child's public school a B plus. It's because they go to the school and the, and the teacher knows their name and they, knows, they know the name of little Johnny. But if they're taking federal funds, they are teaching the federal curriculum. And they are not for your children and they are not for God. And they're not for this nation. In fact, 25% now of high school grads, that's one out of four if you went to our public schools. I said that. 25% of our high school grads are considered illiterate. There are 30 million public school grads in America who cannot read that sentence. That's one-tenth of our population can't even read that sentence. Half of public school kids smoke, do drugs, or drink alcohol. And students are not allowed to name Jesus in school, but they can talk about Muhammad or Buddha all day long. Many sex education videos qualify as pornography. Students are given free birth control pills and access to condoms. They teach 11-year-old girls how to put condoms on zucchinis. They're not teaching them how to put condoms on zucchinis. They're saying, if you're not doing this, there's something wrong with you. Why aren't you doing this? Or is there something wrong with you? That's what they're teaching them. Why? Because if they go out and get impregnated at the age of 11 or 13 or 15, chances are good if they don't abort the baby, they'll end up living on welfare the rest of their lives and be locked in to the government programs. And it destroys the family at the same time. Half of public school kids engage in sex, and the majority of public school teachers vote liberal Democrat. In 1983, this report was given to the National Commission on Excellence in Education, called a nation at risk. It stated, if an unfriendly power had attempted to impose on America the mediocre educational performance that exists today, we might well have considered it as an act of war. Remember, it was 1963 that we kicked God out of our schools. We kicked out prayer and biblical creation. At that time, our schools were rated number one in the world in almost every category. Today, we're almost dead last in every category. In Romans 1, we're told, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, being filled with all unrighteousness and fornication. By 1966, the drug culture and the sexual revolution exploded across America. When I was in high school, there were two sexually transmitted diseases. Today, there are about 60, including the AIDS virus. 
Back to Romans, filled with backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things. Between 1967 and 1974, there was a major overhaul of public education in America. Several publications served as the blueprints for this overhaul. Two of the primary ones were the Behavioral Science Teacher Education Project and the Taxonomy of Educational Objectives. Their goals included to develop a culture where a few elite would rule the majority and develop a dumbed-down majority that would be totally dependent on the government for their existence and well-being. Howard Phillips said the government schools are doing their best to train future generations to be servants of the state. The goals included developing a culture where chemical experiments on students would be considered to be normal. Have you heard the term Ritalin? Did you hear that 40 years ago? Not at all. These are experiments on drugs on live children and to develop students who lack any self-control so that our freedoms must be curtailed for our own good. In 1962, the top problems including kids talking at a turn in class. Today's problems include aggravated assault, drug gang, suicide, and mass murder. And they need to take our freedoms away from us for our own well-being. Back to Romans, disobedient to parents without understanding. By 1971, Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals were published. This has had a massive impact on America, and most Americans aren't even aware of it. Rules for Radicals. Based on the neo-Marxist goals of Antonio Gramsci, the main goals are to undermine biblical absolutes and Christian morals causing a nation to rot from within and implode upon itself. Founding Father Jedediah Moore said, whenever the pillars of Christianity shall be overthrown, our present Republican forms of government must fall with them. Neo-Marxist Saul Alinsky dedicated his book, Rules of Radicals, to Lucifer saying he was the very first radical who rebelled against the establishment and inherited his own kingdom. Known as the original community organizer. He said the first step in community organization is community disorganization. The rules for radicals are to invade every possible group in a nation, from the government to the Boy Scouts, to the church, schools, every organization. Every organization has a position, right? But you come in with your far left agenda. That causes conflict. Divide people by race, religion, income, gender, sex, whatever it takes. Cause conflict. Well, most people don't like conflict. Well, nobody likes conflict, but a lot of people will just fold up when conflict rears its head, right? So what do they do? If, if this is their position, they're going to compromise, right? Which way? Always to the left. If you wonder why America keeps moving left and left over the last 40 years, it's rules for radicals. You compromise toward the radical position. And Alinsky said the most potent weapon was name-calling. Anyone who refuses to compromise, just call them names, and people will back away from them. Call them a fundamentalist, a racist. You hear that term all the time today, don't you? Stupid, ignorant, etc. Call them names, and most people will back away from them. And the person who won't compromise gets left standing pretty much on their own. Returning to Romans, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. We legalized abortion in 1973. We have aborted 55 million American citizens. I know there's probably women in this room who've had an abortion. I just want to say, make sure you get it right with God. He'll forgive you like this. Men, there's just as many men in this room who've had an abortion as women. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. I'm not going to get into it. 
Make sure you make it right with God, too. He'll forgive you. He wants to. I don't have time to go into it right now, but make sure you get it right with your loving Creator. Between 1976 on, the Ten Commandments, Christmas displays, even moments of silence have been kicked out of our public schools. Today, America is the largest exporter of pornography. We have the Men-Boy Love Association, same-sex marriage being approved in a growing number of states. It's estimated that if you send your kids through 12 years of public school, one out of 10 children will face unwanted sexual advances by school staff before they graduate. I think it's safe to say that biblical absolutes and Christian morals have been undermined in the United States of America. Harry Truman said just 60 years ago, the fundamental basis of this nation's law was given to Moses on the Mount, the Ten Commandments. If we don't have the proper moral background, we will finally end up with a totalitarian government. My friends, we are that close. The Bible says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and, vain, philosophy and vain deceit after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Abraham Lincoln said, The philosophy of the classroom today will be the philosophy of the government tomorrow. And my friends, the greatest generation and baby boomers are being replaced daily by true ultimate victims of our public school system who have no idea about biblical morals, no idea about the God-given freedoms, and no clue about America's great Christian and true heritage and history. The list is endless. Public school curriculum promotes Darwinism, relativism, and other pagan beliefs while actively undermining the United States of America, biblical principles, and children's faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This columnist suggested public schools are liberalism's reproductive system. This Christian and former public school teacher quit advising parents Homosexuals, radical environmentalists, and atheists are given free reign to pervert, pervert the mind of your child by a public school system that is eager to attack Christian educators and undermine Christian children. America is rushing toward that one world government. 85 to 90 percent of Christian kids leave the church by the age of 20. 12 percent of U.S. adults claim to be, claim to be former Christians. Paganism, like witchcraft, is doubling every year and a half in America. And 20% of young adults claim they have no religious belief at all. In fact, those that hold a no religious belief is the largest and fastest growing religious group in America today. Former community organizer and president of the United States, Barack Obama, stated whatever we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. Christian teachers on being the salt and the light. This Christian and former public school teacher said there are many good Christian teachers in public schools. However, they are scared to death to say anything that might cause them to lose their jobs. If you don't toe the line and teach the curriculum, let's be honest with yourselves. How much are you really getting done there? You know, if you're really honest with yourself, and the Bible says, do not be deceived. Evil communications will corrupt good manners. If you're honest with yourself, you're far more likely convincing Christian parents that their children are perfectly safe in our public schools when nothing could be further from the truth. Now, if they go through 12 years, maybe they'll have a good Christian teacher three or four years. Well, these are nine to eight, nine years that they're going to have a non-Christian teacher. And Christian parents, if you think your kids are being the salt and the light, think about this. Like Charles Stanley said, when you send your child into a public school today, you're sending them into a pagan society. Parents, would you send your kids to a Muslim school or a Hindu school or a New Age school or a witchcraft school? Then why would you send them to our pagan public schools? Charles Potter, a Unitarian minister and signer of the original human Humanist Manifesto said, education is a most powerful ally of humanism and every public school is a school of humanism. 
And taking your kids out of certain classes will not protect them. They'll be filled in on the details during the recess. <laughs> Back to Charles Potter. What can the Theistic Sunday School, meeting for an hour a week, do to stem the tide of the five-day program of humanistic teaching, which is now backed up by the media? And the answer is not much. Yet 90% of Christian parents put their kids in public schools, and 90% of Christian parents say to me, oh, my kid's in school and he's doing just fine. No, he's telling you what you want to hear. He knows what you want to hear. And he's still going to church with you because you're taking him. Studies say 71% of Christian kids leave the church the day they leave their parents' house. And it climbs to 85 to 90% by the age of 20. Parents, your child is your responsibility to raise. The Bible says, fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. My friends, your children are your duty to educate. The Bible says, and these words shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And parents, your child is not an evangelistic tool to take on the multi-billion dollar public school apparatus with hundreds of professionally trained adults and hundreds of peer pressuring kids that have been totally indoctrinated against Christianity. If you use your child as an evangelistic tool, 85% of you are going to lose that bet. He that walks with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Believers, pray for your family. Pray for the family of your friends. Teach your family good apologetics. Let them know that they were created by God. They did not evolve over millions of years of death and suffering. And if you're one of the half of Christians that now compromise God's word with the foundation of Darwinism and secular humanism, which is millions of years of time, get some information and learn why a global flood wipes out every old earth belief. And go with us when we go to Grand Canyon this year. And make the best investment of your lives, the best investment ever, and homeschool your children because you have seen the village <laughs> and you don't want it raising your children and grandchildren. <laughs> Amen. If you absolutely cannot homeschool, find a true Christian school. I don't mean a school that says we're a Christian school. I mean a real Christian school. And you're going to have to go in and interview the director and interview the teachers and find out, do they base their teachings on the Bible? Do they employ only God-honoring teachers? And do they refuse to compromise the Word of God with secular atheist philosophies? It always starts, compromise always starts with billions of years of time and denial of the flood. Let me end with this. John Dunphy wrote in the Humanist magazine that the battle for humankind's future must be waged and won in the public school classroom by teachers who correctly perceive their role as proselytizers of a new faith, a religion of humanism, which will replace the rotting corpse of Christianity. And this was written in 1983. How many generations does it take to go from being a God-honoring nation to being a pagan nation? How many generations did it take for the ancient Israelites to be handed over to their enemies for forsaking God? My friends, if we don't learn from history, we will probably repeat history. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. My friends, I want to implore you and exhort you to get in the battle. This is a fight for the eternal salvation and destination of you, your children and grandchildren, and everybody you've ever laid your eyes upon. Get in the battle. Learn some information. Start sharing it with people. Start a course in your own, in your own church. You know, only 2% of churches will let me share the Darwinian information. Oh, yeah. Why? 
because of billions of years belief. They don't want to upset the people that believe in billions of years. In fact, 90% of accredited or 90% of Christian seminaries teach old earth beliefs. That put death before Adam. And their grads are filling the church. So people like me get blocked. We get blocked. I couldn't even find a church in, in this area that let me speak tomorrow. We're right here and we didn't couldn't find a place to share. The calling of this ministry is to teach about creation, evolution, and age of the earth issues, to expose false anti-biblical teachings, and to provide a reason for the hope that's in the heart of all true believers and all true seekers. Let me end my session with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that for this day. I thank you for Bill and Susie Perkins and all they do to, to get God-honoring, sometimes difficult to, to listen to information out, but God, it's the only way for us to, to sharpen each other as iron is to sharpen iron. I hope and I pray the information that I've shared today will just wake some people up and exhort us to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. It's in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that I do pray. Amen.